We're taking you through a crawl space walkthrough and we're gonna do that right now. If this is the first time you stop by our channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Now let's jump into this. Okay, so here is the crawl space that we just uh, started. Well, we did this one a couple months ago. But anyways, this was the condition when we first went in there. You can see that there is a white powder that is on the walls. Now, if you've never watched any of our videos before, um, just to let you know, this is called efflorescence, and this is a salt mineral deposit that's left behind when water wicks up from around the footer and it wicks up the block. And this block that is also uh, up against the uh, soil on the exterior, all the moisture from the rain and everything that's bound in that soil wicks into the block because this uh, CMU block is a semi-porous material, which means that it does absorb water. And as it absorbs water, it tries to reach an equilibrium. And as it wicks out, uh, of the block and into the crawl space to reach that equilibrium it leaves this salt mineral deposit. This is not mold that's on the wall here, but it is a sign that you have a moisture issue. Now, as we go through here and point out some of the other things that are causing moisture problems, these open vents. Now, the, the, uh, these have been slid closed, but uh, this is an open vent style. It's not air sealed properly. There's another one over here and they're throughout the uh, foundation. You want to make sure that these are sealed off uh, in air sealed, not just blocked off, but actually air sealed um, when you start an encapsulation. But you can see uh, over the years, um, people have just left cords on there uh, on the ground. You got cable, wires, electrical. This is all pretty typical of um, what an open crawl space looks like nine times out of ten when we go in there. This area looks a little bit better. This is just a six mil um, plastic vapor barrier that's put on the ground. This is builder base grade. It's not sealed to the walls or anything. Moisture still wicks in, gets on top of the vapor barrier and stuff. Here you can see again that um, you have the open foundation vents. These will need to be sealed off. You can see some microbial growth or mold growth up there. and We're gonna get more into that. Here you can see where water has uh, risen above this vapor barrier and once it gets on top it's just traveled here and then over time it evaporates and then refloods and it just moves all the soil on top of here. Now as it evaporates it goes up into the house and, or up into the crawl space air and raises the humidity. Once the humidity is over 60 percent then um, it turns you can turn around and start having mold grow on the wood framing members and you can see that uh, looks like some uh, these are for probably for termites um, that they drilled these holes or that or they were releasing pressure and drilled them for uh, weep holes but these are a little bit too high for weep holes so I imagine what that is and you can again you can just see you got electrical wires and cable wires that all are just laying in uh, water so that is not a good thing and definitely presents a hazard. Uh, here's not very good image, but these columns aren't wrapped. Uh, this vapor barrier is not sealed. So as the uh, soil releases the moisture, it comes up through these pathways as well. It raises the humidity and then starts mold growth on all the wood framing, starts having your insulation fall. Same thing here, just dark. I mean, this is just a very typical builder base grade uh, crawl space. You can see that there is a known problem here with the humidity and water intrusion. So this homeowner uh, put in a fan uh, that he got from a box store and is just trying to move air around. This actually spreads the mold spores to areas that it wasn't growing and uh, just amplifies the conditions for microbial growth. You don't want to add a fan to where mold is growing. Uh, you can see it's not vapor barriers, not attached to the wall, and that's what we're showing here and allowing all this moisture from the soil to just evacuate up into the crawl space air. No seams are sealed. 
The vapor barrier just moves around over time, just exposes more of the ground and allows more of that moisture to enter the crawl space and do damage to your HVAC system as well. So again, this is just your typical vapor barrier laid down, nothing special. And we'll just keep moving through this until we get to some juicier foot uh, photos here. But uh, here we have removed the vapor barrier and now you can see the soil. This soil is holding a lot of moisture in it, um, but it's not sinking in and you don't have any mud, major mud spots yet. So here's the guys are starting to grade everything out and get all the fine uh, pieces of trash that have been left over in here and there's bagging everything up and pulling the vapor barrier out getting this all graded and ready for an encapsulation just moving through you can see there is another vapor barrier underneath the vapor barrier that i just showed you we're going to get that fan out of there you always want to make sure you have a really good cleanup going on so here this is a condensation pump for the hvac system uh, the drain line coming down and then uh, this uh, cord here just pumps the water um, that's um, coming from your HVAC system out to daylight. Make sure that it's remo removed from the crawl space area. So we're just going through here. You can see all of these rocks and pieces of concrete that was left under there from the initial uh, building of the house. Some more here. This is just more debris. We collect all this stuff. I mean, we got to get it to where it's like fine dirt like that. We don't want any rocks or anything puncturing the vapor barrier or anything of that nature. So we spend a lot of time doing a real good clean out. You can see a lot of this stuff that's piling up there. And this is a big mound here. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. Remember this job pretty good. So all this has to be graded out so it's nice and smooth. So you get a really good quality install. Most of your um, Crawl space encapsulation companies, they're just going over all this stuff. They're going over the pipes, everything. I mean, they're they're not grading anything. I mean, they're trying to just get in there, grab the money, and go. Uh, we actually spend the time to make sure this thing looks uh, A-plus when we're finished. A-plus, plus, if I could say that. So again, if you're doing, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you got to make sure you just spend the time you need to make sure that you get all this debris out and you get all the fine stuff out of there really well. You want a good, clean, level crawl space to work with before you install that vapor barrier. If you're a contractor, please do this. These people are paying a lot of money to have this service done. Make sure it's nice and cleaned out. You want everything looking really, really good. Look at that. The guys are really getting um, it cleaned out and nice and level. All right, so we're jumping immediately from um, the clean out portion here straight to uh, we started doing the encapsulation and what we're showing here is we got water starting to come in here now this uh, customer originally uh, didn't want any drainage put in didn't think that he had water uh, coming in we always 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 recommend a drainage system uh, be put in uh, prior to an encapsulation it's just like you want a solid foundation for uh, before you build the house. You want to make sure that the encapsulation has a solid drainage system to sit upon because the encapsulation is only as good as the waterproofing or the dewatering system. Again, this is just showing more and more of the water starting to creep in as it's raining outside and the guys are down there. They're uh, getting stuff down here to start extracting the water more water coming in. This all comes from underneath the footer and then raises up along the entire perimeter of the uh, crawl space. So before we can guarantee our work, we got to get in there and we got to get this water out of here. We got to get a dewatering system, a French drain, a curtain drain, uh, whatever you want to call it. We got to get that installed and that water taken care of before we finish encapsulating this so obviously we went back to the customer on this one showed him these photos and said look I know you said that you didn't think that there was any water coming in there and we told you that there was well here's the documented um, 
uh, photos of the water coming in as it's raining and we cannot put our lifetime guarantee on this encapsulation if we don't uh, install a full drainage system here to take care of this. So unfortunately we ended up having to do that for this customer. You can see the large mm -hmm. amount of water starting to come in, right? And we just do not want any of that. This vapor barrier is meant to stop vapor and it's not meant to be a dam and stop the water. You, you can't block the water. What you need to do is control the water and move it from one area to another. You want to control that with a proper dewatering system or a French drain. We like a, say, a, a open contain drain if that's possible the way that we install our drainage systems, but we leave the top exposed so the water can easily flow in there, but it's all wrapped with a geotextile that uh, takes care of that. But again, look at the large amount of water that's coming in here during this rain event. Now, luckily, we're in actually in the, in the encapsulation stage. Um, we always want to be working when it's raining. Sorry about that. We always want to work when it's raining so we can... Um, or, yeah, we want to work when it's raining. Uh, that way, if any water comes in there and they didn't choose a drainage system, uh, we can capture that before we're finished with the project because we don't want to have to peel everything back and then uh, install the drainage and then reinstall the vapor barrier and clean it up and all that stuff just adds to the cost. Now, we have finished putting in a perimeter drain system all the way around here, and we're going to get into more of that as we go along. But this is the install is uh, complete in this area, right? Over here, the guys are just giving us our daily update. They got to seal this. We got this dehumidifier in here, our April Air 1850. We got that installed with a moisture monitor in here and a leak detector, and we got it in our specialty pan. That way, if this condensate pump fails, which would be the main failure port in this crawl space, it'll hit this string and alert us. Uh, via text or email and a pop-up message on the customer's phone as well so we can fix the problem before the water spreads all out in all different directions. You've got plenty of time before that happens. But we want to get that humidity under control as fast as possible. So before the encapsulation's finished on this project, we already installed the dehumidifier to lower that relative humidity below 60%. Always want it below 60%. So here we go. We're starting to get everything encapsulated. Everything sealed now, as you can see, the vapor barrier running up the columns and uh, all completely sealed. So no vapor can come around the walls nor up the columns and get to this wood and cause microbial growth or mold growth. All right, insulation's looking good. All the floor joists are looking good. Uh, it's 74% when we hook this up. So or 79% relative humidity when we hook this up and that's why that thing is in there before we finish encapsulating. We got to get that thing under control quick. So the guys have moved along and that section is encapsulated. This one is as well. Everything's starting to look really, really good now. Um, again, on our April airs, uh, this is our Clearview condensate pump. When the air, the air actually comes in this direction, right, the moist air, and it goes over condensate, uh, or actually goes over coils that take it from a vapor phase back into a liquid and it condenses that, and then it drains through this pipe into this condensate pump, which has a sensor in it. Once that sensor is activated, the water goes up and through this condensation pump, and then it's taken away uh, to the outside or to a sub pump that takes it out to daylight away from the foundation out of the crawl space. We always hook up this mylar ducting. We take this to the opposite side of the crawl space and dump the hot, uh, dry air, very low relative humidity air to the opposite side of the crawl space. That way this dehumidifier doesn't short cycle because the sensor is up in here and it's checking the air, but it's checking the air around the dehumidifier. We don't want this exhaust blowing right next to it because it's going to give a false positive. And it could be, you could have high relative humidity on this side of the crawl space. So that's why we duct it to the opposite side. Make sure there's no short cycling. Make sure uh, this thing runs as long as it really needs to in the beginning 
to make sure it balances out that drying system. Again, we, we have our specialty pans we had made. Uh, these are not um, pans with a drain to drain this somewhere else. It's meant to capture water if the condensate pump fails and to activate our switch and send us alerts. Here is another section where we finished the encapsulations. You can see the guys really take pride in their work and it is an absolutely stellar job. They have done very, very good on this encapsulation. And you spend a lot of money, you want this thing to look amazing. And we're gonna have other videos and I'll put one up here in, the, uh, in this section up here showing you some bad encapsulations. Um, but this is a very good, very good install that the guys have done. Uh, all the uh, foundation vents that I showed you in the beginning have been completely sealed and they're air sealed as well, right? So it's just not blocked off, but they're actually air sealed. And that's very important. You wanna make sure that, that your foundations are air sealed and air seal the crawl space is uh, extremely important. But look how flat everything is, nice. We've got all that garbage and everything out of it there. And we're able to do a really nice job. So here we are in a different section. Guys did a good job wrapping all that up. Everything completely sealed. Right around here, you guys can't see it, there, there's pins that we have every so far that, uh, that are on this wall. But right below those pins, we have a specialty um, caulking or adhesive that runs all the way along there to make sure everything's completely sealed. And that goes the same with the columns. It's right below the pins. Um, so no air can escape from the vapor barrier back up into the crawl space. Again, another section, they, they remember I said before, a lot of the companies are going over top of these pipes. I mean, they're, they, they're, they don't either know how to go under them or they're just being lazy and throwing it, uh, the vapor barrier over top of it. And you can just imagine how awful that would look. Our guys have everything sealed super nice as it exits the building envelope and have everything sealed very nice as we're going through. Just a stellar install, absolutely smooth, 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 like an ice skating rink in there. It is just very, very nice. All the trash, everything's been taken out. This is our hydroseal vapor barrier. Um, this is some really, really good stuff. On the opposite side that you can't see of this vapor barrier is a silver foil that uh, blocks out radiant heat. So it's got a foam core of insulation, it's got a radiant barrier, and then it's got 100% uh, woven um, vapor barrier on top of it. I mean, this is some really, really thick stuff, super, super thick uh, vapor barrier we got installed there. And you can see this section, another section we got everything taken care of, looking really stellar, everything super sealed up. The insulation in this crawl space was... Uh, perfectly fine so we didn't put any rigid foam board on the walls here uh, we left the insulation uh, up here this was still in mostly a preventative maintenance um, install so we saved a lot on uh, pulling the insulation having to replace insulation and all that stuff most of the time when we get to these jobs the insulation's got to come out new insulation may have to go back in and uh, that really drives up the expense so that's why you want to have your cap crawl space encapsulated before there's a major problem, not afterwards. And you've got a costly remediation and replace an HVAC system. I mean, it can just skyrocket out of nowhere. Again, guys just did an absolutely fantastic job here with the, um, with the install. Another beautiful job. Now, when you don't have an encapsulated crawl space, one of the other major benefits is um, when you do encapsulate, the benefit is that your energy bill goes down uh, by 20% or more in a lot of cases because these ducts in an open crawl space, um, when you have the open vents and everything, your crawl space is just part of the outside. It's not part of the inside of the building envelope. So the temperature fluctuations that come in and out due to these uh, vents being open, um, these HVAC flex lines have to overcome that so they have to work really hard uh, during the summer months uh, to cool everything off. And that really runs your uh, your energy cost up. Your electric bill 
uh, just skyrockets. And the same thing uh, opposite when, when it's uh, cold outside and your crawl space is super cold and you're trying to heat it up, uh, this has to, all the air that passes through there really has to work hard to overcome those differentials. Once the crawl space is encapsulated and sealed and the humidity and everything is under control, the temperature gets under control as well and starts flatlining. So the degree difference between the inside of this crawl space and these flex lines, it doesn't have to overcome that differential so much. So your energy costs really start to go down to a very noticeable difference. So encapsulating your crawl space is a huge, huge benefit uh, to your home performance and uh, your energy costs going down. So you definitely want to do it for that reason too, not just moisture control. This is a very smart investment. So you can imagine as you start getting uh, uh, mold growth on here, and this is staining that's left behind uh, after remediation, but you can end up starting to get dry rot all over here. And there'll be plenty of videos if you subscribe to our channel that you can see uh, just how bad the mold can get in the wood rot and uh, your floor joists start falling apart and then you got problems on the inside of your house with your cabinets and hardwood floors and everything else. This all has to be replaced and jacked up and uh, you probably have to uh, do uh, some structural repairs on the inside of your house. So taking care of your crawl space moisture is extremely important. So here's just another section of the uh, encapsulation that they did. There's your inspection gap for termite inspections. We work with a lot of pest control companies, so we always want to make sure that that's there. Beautiful job. Again, we ran that, um, that uh, drainage all along the uh, perimeter, so it has to go somewhere and be pumped out. So here is uh, one of our sub pumps that we installed, and all that water flows right into the sub pump, and then it's pumped up through this pipe out the rim joist, and then out away from the house on a pop-up emitter. This is the inside as you come in. We always put down a nice little mat for high traffic areas. There, we don't wrap uh, these wood columns all the way up, and if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you definitely don't want to do that um, because you want the moisture, if it wicks into the wood, you do want it to be able to uh, evaporate back out. So you only want to seal the very bottom, but you don't want to seal uh, that thing all the way up or it can cause it to rot out. We want that moisture to be able to get out of that wood. Here's just another great picture of that area. Here is our uh, sub pump basin. All right, we have a little plug that we put in there uh, to seal that the rest of the way. It's got a nice sealed gasket all the way around it and our three quarter horsepower uh, sub pump down there. Just a great install clear lid. Uh, when we do inspections, uh, the guys can look in there, make sure everything is working without having to take off the lid. And if they do, it's just a couple screws and that'll be good to go. So just another photo from a different angle showing the encapsulation. Here is uh, part of that drainage that we had to put in to uh, take care of everything. There was originally before the sub pump that you just saw was finished off so you can see the aggregate around it that's so so very important um, yep just more pictures of the drainage actually being done and then this was the actual end of that what that looked like I think I might be going backwards or I either got multiple pictures going on there so uh, when that sub pump comes out, here's what it looks like when it exits, right? It hits a 90 and then hits our freeze relief. So if uh, during the winter months up north, you want to make sure your sub pump line doesn't freeze. So if it does in here, it'll shoot out this way and it won't cause the sub pump to fail and back up. It allows the water to escape um, during the, the uh, times it's not freezing. It flows right down into this pipe and then is taken away. We didn't have very far to go in this one, so I believe that's why the pop-up emitters here, there was um, some hardscape and stuff that uh, we weren't able to uh, get past on that one. So that is the line that you just saw from the inside uh, and all that getting taken away, buried, all that good stuff. So. 
that is the end of this one. I hope you guys really like this walkthrough. Hopefully uh, you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification and you get to see more of these. If you have any type of questions whatsoever about this crawl space encapsulation stuff, we'd like to answer your questions below. Let us know what type of videos you'd like us to do more of and uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this style of video when we really go through these things in detail from start to finish from when we initially inspect it, the problems that we run into, how we address all those, and how we get that crawl space looking absolutely phenomenal. Thank you guys so much. Take care.